So tell me your snatch weights again. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you back squat? <laughs> Four or five, four or five rolling. below parallel. All right, <laughs> children, <laughs> let's get to the point of this video. All right, so today we're gonna cover our group training program, the design. Our new cycle starts on January 6th. For a really long time, Training Think Tank as an organization didn't really do any group training style stuff because there's just a lot of difficulties with running it. We think, obviously, we've built a brand on coaching yeah. people one-on-one, -on -one, so. Yeah, like that model was completely against what the group model was about. Yeah, so they were very much in conflict. So um, now we're trying to do that. We're trying to serve a different need in the fitness community. So we're trying to build our community. We've had a lot of people that, you know, I've gone through the coaching route for a really long period of time. They understand how to moderate volume. They understand how to take care of themselves. They really just want structure at that point instead of one-on-one -on -one coaching, mm -hmm. or they don't have the financial resources to commit to full one-on-one -on -one coaching. Yep. It's a bunch of reasons that people can kind of do the one-on-one -on -one yeah. coaching. I think that's one of the cool things is we've had a lot of people that signed up as uh, an individual client, and then because they've gone through it for multiple years, they say, hey, I want another option, but I want to stay within the brand. And now that we have the design, they're able to do that with still good training models and they're able to stay within kind of the community that we've created yeah yeah and get some level of coaching still because of all the new things that we're adding um, with the new format of the design coming out here soon yeah and one thing too I've I've learned from this I mean obviously my my entire athletic career prior was pretty much one-on-one -on -one coaching even though I played in like group sports just basically having strength coaches or having independent <laughs> wrestling coaches and then you realize there's a huge level of accountability and community that comes from just going through the same thing with a group of people so I think it's been a an awesome learning process for me to want to continue to invest in it and also hold me accountable to my own training since yep. I've been doing it and yep. it has actually been a super high level of progress over the past year, just being able to know like, all right, well, if I don't train today, yep. everybody in here is gonna yep. know. <laughs> Mis misery loves company. <laughs> people, people like to suffer uh, better together. Yeah, for sure. So we're trying to upgrade the program pretty much every training cycle. Some of the big changes that we have, um, the reason why all three of us are in this video is one, I wanted to get a new look for writing training programs. One of the benefits of CrossFit as a sport or CrossFit as a training ideology is that you get a lot of training variants. And whether or not I try to make things non-biased and make them constantly varied, I'm always gonna have some sort of uh, similar patterns in the way that I write things. So during this training cycle, Brandon and Mike are both helping me with the construction of our three training paths. So we got the CrossFit path, which Mike pretty much took the lead on this this three months, um, other than the throwdown, which is written by all the coaches. Yeah, all the coaches contribute to that. Yep, Brandon, who is writing all the engine training program, and then I wrote all of the strength path with the help of Adam, who wrote the weightlifting portion of the strength path. So that'd be one big change. We one also, yeah, one of, the, one of the cool things we'll have for everyone is now we have movement demos for every single movement. So when you, when there's a movement maybe you know, but you want to see Mike because he looks really good doing a squat snatch, yeah, you're yeah, able to see that. Yeah, that definitely is debatable. <laughs> the, the ice cream maker was the only debatable one. I was like, I'm not sure we need someone else to come yeah. in for that. I needed to get somebody to do that for me. <laughs> I'm not sure mine is good for that either. Yeah. So we'll have that, and then the movements that you don't know, you're able to click on it now and actually see how to do the movement well. Yeah, I think writing program, it's, it's like a language of yourself and I know even for myself I change the way that I write things and people would be like I'm googling these videos and I can't find them so we've listened now we have movement demos yeah. for all of those and um, a uniformed way to actually speak the design yeah, like yeah. The, the movements yeah. will say the same thing every yeah, single week yeah, if it's something sure. that's going over um, what else what other changes we have the uh, the skill progressions oh yeah we have the skill progressions. that's so a the, big one yeah there's a lot of people that are in the sport of CrossFit that are really good let's say there's like 20 movements that have come out in the open is it 20? It was 28. Like 28? Yeah. All right, 28 movements that oh, have come. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What kind of coach? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's 28. Um, so you have all these movements, and there might be people that are proficient in like 20 of them, mm -hmm. but these eight really high skill movements like muscle ups, handstand walking, handstand push ups, people just don't have the requisite ability. Yeah. And when we write a group program, it's very hard to say, okay, well, we're going to identify these priorities and write the training program to that because that's really like one on one coaching. Yep. If somebody yeah. comes to you with a weakness, yeah. it's very easy to make them better at that. But in a group model, if you do that, you're not really training everything. So we created yeah. these skill progressions and we integrated them into the CrossFit path. So that way people can choose, if I'm not good at chest-to-bar pull-ups, here's a skill progression that I do, 20 or 30 minutes.
minutes of total time and we'll run that for the whole first cycle, which is gonna be three months long. So they'll get 12 touches yeah. on that specific movement. And I think that'll be a good opportunity for people to develop pretty high levels of skill on that stuff. Yeah, and it's, it's formatted in a way where you can kind of choose your own adventure with it. Yeah, um, that's, and, I think, the coolest thing, yeah, is being able to do that. It's obvious, it's pretty clear like what movements are bottlenecks in these workouts, so we chose those, like things like ring muscle ups, pistols. We're not doing like box jump progressions per se, but yeah. um, movements that are typically more of a bottleneck for people. You can kind of choose and you kind of build your path as you go. Yeah, so air squats would be a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you will notice that most of those are ones that are tested in the open or at a sanctional event that most people, like you said, are bottlenecked in. Yeah. And it's definitely those that you can make up the most time too. Like if you're not efficient at chest to bars, you're losing a lot of time to the field, but by, by learning how to properly butterfly chest to bar, obviously now you can gain up that time. Or yeah, gain I mean, that time. hitting it once a week in a Metcon just like isn't enough to see real For progress sure. on it. So we believe that like the two to three days a week of doing the skill, it's two days a week. Yes, we have specific. two days a week yeah. that it's written in there, but really if people wanted to sign up and just take those and do, you yeah. know, sk just skill progressions yeah, five days a week, they could. Yeah. Yeah. So what we're doing is taking a group model, but allowing some, creating some individual programs within that. For, for sure. The, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think the primary thing with regards to any for, sort of individual coaching or any sort of coaching in general is education. And like we have experience ourselves as athletes, you guys as more successful CrossFit <laughs> athletes than me, but, um, and then also as coaches helping people that have been at a, like a really low level that don't know how to do things. Mm -hmm. And then also people at a super high level that need to refine how they do things yeah. to be able to get a competitive edge. Basically we took all of that experience and then tried to build some sort of educational experience around that, similar to how we first did with the warmups to get yep. people like, instead of being overly reliant on us yeah. being like, hey, write every warm up for us. I was like, okay, well we could do that, but also you should have the ability to understand how to do it for yourself if Absolutely. you go to a competition. Yeah. So that's really kind of the underlying um, philosophy that drives our group program is like, let's keep making it better and then also keep making a more educated athlete. So yeah. that way we're not just spoon feeding people to not be self-sufficient. Yeah. yeah. Part of educating the athlete is we are giving them some follow along warmups to start so that they can kind of see like, hey, here's how we would do a barbell warm up for the snatch or exactly. for the clean and jerk or whatever it may be. And then they can take it on their own and say, okay, how would I tweak this for the needs that I have? Yeah, and or they could memorize it so that way anytime you come in, you're like, all right, for I sure. have this like three yep. minute barbell warm up that I could do anytime I need to get ready for doing a barbell and I don't need to think about that portion of my warm up. That's extremely important too for competitors because what you see when you have people go to a competition and they don't have a routine set for their warm-ups when they go in they get so distracted by everything else that's going on it's chaotic and if you're just so if you're used to following what you do in training on a consistent basis when you go to a competition and there's people running around everywhere getting in your way like it's going to be really distracting this makes it really easy for you to stay and follow basically the same thing you did as just another training session Okay, so next I'd say who's the program for I guess some people maybe who are watching this don't really know much about the design itself. So we have three major paths. We have the CrossFit path, we have the strength path, and we have the engine path. And I think that segments to really decide, well, those are the three types of people that could follow the program. Yeah. Somebody that just wants a broad CrossFit-based pr tr training program that I'd say it's probably more suited towards not necessarily being competitive at the highest level, but just having a more competitive mind state focus to the sport yep. or to the training ideology. So like, yeah. And being very good at qualifiers yeah, too. Qualifiers. Most of the movements that are in there yep. are those that have been tested in the open or other qualifiers we've seen. Yeah, so it's more sport of CrossFit yep. than ideology of like level one curriculum of CrossFit. Yeah, definitely moving beyond just like finding general health. I would say it's more for those that maybe do classes but are always wanting to do a little something extra because the sessions are gonna be a little longer than just 45 to 60 minute class. Yeah. So so like you're gonna get a little more volume in, you're gonna get more practice on movements more frequently than you would in like a class setting as well. Yeah, speaking to that though, the Metcon portion, which is generally gonna be part two of yep. the training program in the current cycle, is now gonna be part of our TTT60 program, which is basically a free group training Metcon style workout, which would probably more closely follow mm -hmm. CrossFit ideology, just group class. Go in, get a warm up, do a workout that makes you breathe, sweat, do some different movements, and then get out of there. Yep. Whereas the design program is gonna be a little bit more comprehensive and touch all of the different strength qualities and stuff that you would need to excel in a qualifier. Yeah. All right, so that's strength. Engine? 
Yeah, the engine path, the way that I wrote it for the first 12 weeks, basically wanted to create as much variance throughout the week. So for someone that says, I want to do the CrossFit path and I'm going to throw in the engine every once in a while, or they're doing the entire week, you'll have some variance there. But if you say, hey, I really want to get better at rowing, there are specific rowing intervals on one day every single Monday going through the program for the first six weeks, and then there's bike work for the following six weeks. So it allows you to say like, man, I'm really bad at you know the assault bike. Then you can yeah. get on there and make sure that you're doing it every Monday, or just pick that from Monday and do it yeah. on another day of the week. Yeah. If you want to do something with running, then that's every single Wednesday, and then there's some other easier days throughout the week. But it allows you to pick and choose, or if you're just following the entire path, you create variants throughout Monday through Saturday. Yeah, so you have the, from the engine path, if people are a CrossFit style person, that also wants to develop cyclical capacities, they could do it that way. Or there mm -hmm. are a lot of people that just like to do cyclical activities. They like cardio in the yep. gym. They like to participate in triathlons. They like to bike. The loading of CrossFit, it just hurts their joints. The complex movements they don't have capacity for. So they like to maintain their leanness, maintain their cardiac health. I mean, if you look at uh, things like Peloton or things like Orange Theory Fitness, there's yep. a huge huge demographic of people that might deviate away from wanting strength work, gymnastics work, mixed modal fitness, which we might necessar not necessarily say is the optimal form of exercise if yeah. that's all you're doing. But if it is your, your passion, then you could also just follow that path yeah independently as your fitness program. Yeah, I, I think it's just a low barrier to entry, right? Like you don't have to really learn any movements to do those days. You just hop in, you warm up and you go yeah. and you're kind of done. So if you're like on a time constraint as well, yeah. and like you're just rushed for that day and you don't have time to warm up, bring muscle ups, pistols, all these different movements, you hop into one of those and go. Yeah, travel workouts. Yeah. I think also we have uh, some questions that people ask from Instagram and from our current design group and uh, one of them was about basic, if you're not at a certain level of development for CrossFit, and I think with the changes we made the design, there could be people that could follow the engine path and then do the skill progressions yes, for, sure. for a yep. while until they're developed enough to jump into the actual CrossFit path. Because yeah. we, you know, there is chest to bar pull-ups, there is squat snatches, there are these things that have a certain level of technical development that you need to be able to follow the CrossFit path. And yep. you know, normally we would say if you can't do that, hire a one-on-one -on -one coach for a while to develop those skills yep. and then you can follow the program. Yeah, and I think from an experience perspective too, like maybe some people are getting into this and they're new to it and they don't know their engine, their gears, their pacing with mixed movements. So using things like machines is a really easy way to kind of segue you into that, like learning different gears, learning what sprinting is versus long sustained pace type yep. stuff. I think the engine workouts are really good for that. Cool, so that's the second path. Third is the strength path. I wrote that with Adam. Adam wrote the weightlifting portion of it. So the weightlifting portion of it is purely to develop one RM snatch, one RM clean and jerk. And that was honestly from us seeing the training data coming in from athletes and realizing that overall, as an aggregate group, if people wanna compete in CrossFit, the strength levels are just a little bit too low for the loads that CrossFit puts out yeah. in their qualifiers. Yeah. So yeah. like 17.3 goes 95 pound snatch, 135, 185, 225. Bottleneck. Yeah, then 245, <laughs> yeah. 265. There's people in the program that don't have a 225 pound snatch. So it's like, all right, well you're getting to the third barbell of a Metcon, yeah. you need to develop better strength. So the weightlifting portion of that is basically four days a week developing the 1RMs for snatch and clean and jerk. Then the rest of it is varied strength development. Yeah. So that's something that I believe is super important for long-term health. So the development of strongman strength, the development of grip strength, the development of gymnastics capabilities and hollow body positions and hand balancing capabilities. And I think this path itself could be like similar to how there's people that just like to do engine stuff. Yeah. There's also people, yeah. I'm one of them, even though I don't do it, that don't like to breathe <laughs> right. hard, Love that would warrior. just like to do yeah. strength as their primary fitness, or for people that want to get better at competitive CrossFit that do the strength path until their strength levels rise to a requisite level where they can kind of make a more varied, yeah. uh, a varied program for themselves. Yeah. Yeah, I like the, I like the, how the strength work looks, um, mainly because of the very the variety in it. Um, when people typically think of strength work, they think just barbell or external loaded strength. They don't think isometric strength. They don't think gymnastic holds, things like that. So like there is a huge variety of it, and you're gonna learn a lot of new movements too. So like you're going to learn a lot about different ways to strength train and just to get your body out of uh, doing such 
two-dimensional patterns training in a phone booth all the time. Yeah, I think a lot of people, I don't know if it's just CrossFit or even just the academic model, the biomechanical model of strength, it uses a lot of just very linear patterns. Back yeah. squat, front squat, deadlift, yeah. um, even like the uh, lunge, twist, carry, like the the model of movement that is Constantly yeah, they categorize put, it in just like six of them. Yeah, yeah, and it's very, very simplified, which is probably a very good way to have an entry level of fitness. But if you want actual athleticism, the ability to run, turn around, jump, twist in the air, I think you have to have a concept of what your strength work looks like that's a little bit more um, varied, which is yeah. why that's what the training program is for the strength program. Yeah, and so all the paths allow you to come into the program, say, hey, I'm really weak, but I'm good at all the conditioning stuff, so then you probably should focus on the strength, or hey, I'm really strong, but I have no conditioning base, you could focus on the engine work, or do all of them if you're a higher level athlete that's trying to touch everything. And that's something that we can help the athletes with to kind of give them some guidance on where they should be. Yeah, so then now, what do you think about people combining paths? Because that's been something that's huge. There's actually some really successful high level athletes in the program right now that are doing all three of the paths simultaneously. The one thing that you got to pay attention for of a uh, carryover is that the strength path, a portion of it every day yep. is taken out and put into the CrossFit path. Yeah. So if you are doing that, you just basically need to use a little bit of common sense. So yeah. There's gonna be build to a max snatch in the A of strength work, and then it's also gonna be in the A of CrossFit work. Yeah. You don't repeat that, you just do it once and you figure out. Each one of those sessions by themselves, I'd say the engine is probably closer to the 60 minute time frame, yeah. the strength, depending yeah. on your warm up and how long you take between movements, I'd say is somewhere between 60 and 90. Yeah. And then CrossFit, same type of thing, maybe 60 to 90 or potentially like closer to two hours for potentially the strength in CrossFit, depending on how yeah. long like the stuff that's in it is. Yeah. Yeah, I would say, I mean, you're going to have people that look at all three and, and take that as a personal challenge every day. <laughs> yeah. um, so I think you need to just... Uh, like reality check yourself and just pay attention to are you hitting all of them with quality yeah. if you're just kind of grinding through and it turns into like a seal fit workout yeah. like that's not necessarily the focus so yeah like i would say you could easily follow crossfit and engine on a daily basis because those don't overlap much yeah. at all but the strength and the crossfit do so there will yeah. be days where it's like heavy snatch and clean and jerk volume but you'll also have heavy or you'll have a snatch and clean and jerk volume with the crossfit metcon but it's cut in half because you're also doing 150 wall ball yeah. so just kind of look ahead and pay attention to that yeah. and just be smart you can also do the strength and the engine path pretty Correct. easily yeah. together yeah, yeah. Um, that for sure yeah you just need to be mindful and i think even for high level athletes i don't think people realize you know the instagram culture is like posting about how much work people do and how like yeah. look at how many metcons I did today. High level athletes are not training like that year round. Yep. So if you are jumping into the program and let's say you're prepping for an event like you know, Dylan Pettit's in the program right now, he's prepping for Mayhem, he's doing all of those, that might be a good strategy, but then once Mayhem's over, he might wanna deload mm -hmm. and go, okay, I'm just gonna do the CrossFit two days a week, yep. I'm gonna do one skill progression, and I'm gonna do some of the uh, engine stuff since it's low impact, yep. and I think that, is the coaching aspect of the program is that we have a results reporting system that is a comment-based system as yep. opposed to just putting in, hey, here's my training numbers for the day. We put up the full week in advance so that people can ask me questions or ask us questions. And then also I encourage people if they are like, dealing with aching pains, getting ready for competitions to ask, hey, yeah. how could I adjust this moving forward? Yeah. Because we do realize Happy to help with that. Yeah, there yeah. has to be some sort of coaching that goes into manipulating this. Yeah, and again, I think for those that are trying to figure out what paths to follow, that's another way to comment or reach out to us and say, hey, here are my numbers, this is where I'm at with my CrossFit career, what should I be doing each day? And then we can kind of tailor that to, for them. Okay, so you, let's ahead. talk a little bit about the structure of the week. Yeah. So like what, what the days actually look like. Um, I'd say the, Let's start with CrossFit or strength and work our way backwards. So, yeah, go ahead. You do, um, you do CrossFit first. The CrossFit one is basically the idea over these next 12 weeks is hitting a mix of the movements on a weekly basis. So some level of volume on all the movements. We, we're not necessarily doing a test-retest because we've kind of fallen away from that model. We don't necessarily think that like choosing one Metcon that we want to test and then like do 12 weeks of progressions and then retesting it, yeah, that's a good way to see improvement in that specific Metcon, but it doesn't necessarily make you better at CrossFit. It makes you, it's too controlled. Yeah, it was a, it, it's giving people like false progress because yeah. they would get better at, you know, we would get the open of the previous year, create these very elaborate training mechanisms or uh, progressions, they'd improve those open 
open tests, then new open tests would come out and they would be like, you know, yep. they would be too structured in their mind to think like, oh, I got to transfer that fitness into something else. Yep. So I think now the concept for CrossFit is more just like, let's create some annual benchmarks that we return to every once in a while so we could see fitness. Let's make sure we're progressing the speed with which people can do movements, yep. improve their strength, but not necessarily create a progressive style program on the Metcons yep. to get better at one or two or three Metcons per cycle. Yeah. Yeah, so the, we have different themes. We have movement pairings that we like to train. So we'll have ring muscle-ups, and you have three different forms of fatigue that we want to train under for ring muscle-ups, meaning respiratory fatigue or grip fatigue or core fatigue, right? So you'll see patterns like that throughout it. Monday is going to look more interval-based training um, with CrossFit-style uh, intervals. Tuesday is going to be CrossFit-style Metcon. Wednesday will be more interval-based again, just trying to moderate the intensity as we go through the week, not hitting hard Metcons every day. Um, but making sure that we are training with some level of intensity. Friday, interval based again, and then Saturday, the throwdown. Yeah, we also added on Saturday, in previous Saturdays, yeah. Saturday was just the throwdown. Yeah. Now we have the throwdown plus the skill progression. And then one thing that I think Brandon was really the, um, the inspiration for doing this is coming up with a movement checklist every week to yep. make sure that if somebody wants to get better at this sport, that they're doing all of the movements that are required for the sport. Because yes. I know I would write training programs and I might go like three months without doing light push presses. Yes. Yeah. And while that might not seem like an issue, if you get into a Metcon and it's like a 20 minute AMRAP and every round you're doing 15 push yep. presses, 75 pounds, yep. people's triceps were so sore they couldn't move and they would just yep. be cramping. So um, how do you integrate the movement yeah, checklist? Yeah, that's exactly how you explain it. I basically look at the movements each week and then I pay attention to what was the volume we did of these movements each week and are we hitting everything on a weekly basis? Because it's not about adding more volume for the sake of volume, it's about maintaining frequency of all movements so that you can stay good at them year round. Doesn't mean we do 100 chest bar every week, it means we're gonna do chest bar every week in some capacity, yep. whether it's 25 reps or 100 reps. So at the end of each week, you might see a couple of little pieces after the throwdown that are just practice, skill work, accumulating some volume on movements that you might have missed that previous week. Just so we can basically, like you said, not go three weeks without doing a movement and then all of a sudden you've got um, you know, an open workout that has 20 minutes of push press and you're like yeah. blown up <laughs> yeah. from it. Yeah. All right, um, so that's CrossFit. Yeah. Um, any other things you want to add to that? No, I think, so. okay. I think that's it. So with strength, one of the things that I would say is not a broad, varied approach to strength is using the barbell for strength five days a week. However, if you want to get good at snatch and clean and jerk or you want to compete in a sport that does so much barbell, you need to touch the barbell you do a the thing. lot. Yeah. You have to do the thing. <laughs> yeah. So instead of having a more, in a previous cycle or cycles, I would segment the strength discipline. I would segment the week by strength discipline. So I might do weightlifting on Monday, gymnastics on Tuesday, powerlifting and unilateral strength on Wednesday, etc., and go through the week like that. Now, I have barbell four days a week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday is gonna touch the barbell. The primary progressions on that are weightlifting for the snatch and clean and jerk. And then there's unilateral leg strength mixed in. There's gymnastic strength mixed in. There's strongman strength mixed in. And we're gonna run this cycle for 12 weeks to see what type of progressions we can create. Mm -hmm. And if we can drive people, people's requisite level of barbell strength up high enough, basically what I'll do is deviate away from this a little bit, maybe drop to three days a week of barbell and make it a little bit more varied. But this way, we're basically overloading people's technical ability with barbell yeah. for the next three months to make sure that they're super comfortable in all of the patterns of barbell strength. Yeah, so what about the order of it too? Because one thing that we did previous cycle leading up to the open was we put the strength work after all the conditioning. Yeah. So are we doing that now or is right now, now different? Well, you're doing the CrossFit, so yeah. the strength is first. I guess that's a question right? I yeah, that's, myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for this cycle, we're putting strength work before it. So if you have questions like, why aren't we doing any fatigue based or not, why aren't we doing any heavy lifts after Metcons? Because we believe that right now is the time to develop the requisite levels of strength. And I believe that you can get better at strength work after Metcons, but it's not optimal. I think yeah. it's optimal doing it fresh beforehand, making that the priority. Then as we kind of get closer toward preparing for the open, for example, uh, we'll start to switch that a little bit and make it more sports specific. Yeah, basically improve their strength capacity at that point. Yeah. 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 
And then the engine, we already talked about this a little bit, but really Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays are gonna be more higher intensity days. It just kind of fits into what the CrossFit Path and the Strength Path are doing. Tuesdays and Saturdays are a little bit longer, lower intensity, and I try to create variance across a week, but then also if you're just picking one day, say like every Monday I'm gonna do a PM session, you know that's going to be rowing or biking, and then on Wednesdays it's going to be running. On Fridays it's more power-based work where we kind of mix all the cyclical movements that may be testing the sport. Yeah, so as a... <laughs> I, was say, I don't know about you, but Brandon writing the uh, the engine work scares the shit yeah. out of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Me too. He's a, he's a beast on the machine, so yeah. like I would be, I'd be pretty excited. <laughs> um, the other thing too is if you listen to that, basically the intensity of the engine path is opposite of the intensity of the CrossFit path, so that if people are doing all of them, you're on a lesser intensity CrossFit day with a higher intensity cyclical day. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't be perfect with that, yeah, but yeah. we tried to at least create some sort of structure embedded yep. within it for the people that are following all of the paths. Yeah, there, there are a couple of days that might overlap, so you just have, gotta look at the week ahead. So like some exam some days, the engine path is doing a 2K row, we might be doing the same test for CrossFit, so, uh, but on a different set, yeah. on a different day, so just pay attention yeah. uh, looking at the week ahead. Yeah, so that's how the design works. So every Sunday, we post the full training week. So we have all three paths, all of the workouts come out, and people basically during that time should be using it as an opportunity to ask questions. Like, hey, you know, I can't do this movement on Friday, what should I do as a sub? Or use it as a time to plan. So you go in and you say like, okay, I'm gonna do CrossFit Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm gonna do the engine all days of the week, I'm gonna do my skill progressions on this day, and basically build yourself a little training week so that you know what you're actually doing. And then each day we post at midnight Eastern time, we post the full training day that has a video called Design TV where I walk through the training day, what the intention is, where that progression was based on previous weeks, what you should be focused on, and What's just, the greatest music of all time? It is. It's a great <laughs> intro. <laughs> you, yeah, it's worth it just for that. Yeah. Uh, then that's where all the movement demos will be now, uh, where people can see all the movements that come up there, and then that's where people will report their training results. So basically, go in there, and the more feedback, the better with regards to the program. So we talked about trying to make this thing better, build a community. We have a pretty strong community of people, but we still have a very small portion of people that are following the program that are actually reporting daily results. And I think that's something that we're also trying to continue to encourage people to post those results because that helps us guide the program. Like the reason why we're adding some of this stuff is based on the feedback that we've got based mm -hmm. on like, hey, I didn't know what I should be looking like when I did this movement or here's what, you know, here's the strength levels that I was at for the day. So that guides, okay, well, this is what we need to do in the program. So really the people that are following this, if they want the most effective program possible, communication back and forth yeah. with us is yeah, like super, of super, super important. And see it through. Like, don't don't get in three or four weeks and expect everything to fix right away. Like, see through the, the 12 weeks, at least, that you're going to commit to for that point. Yeah. Yeah, I think if they go through the 12 weeks, you're going to see some progress. And if you're giving feedback, it allows us, again, to improve the program for all of you. All right. So we got a bunch of questions. Let's wrap up with the questions. And I think we probably answered almost all of them nice. <laughs> uh, anyways, but let's just go through them. So I got a couple from email from the current people in the program and a couple from Instagram who I don't know if they're following the free version or if they're in the design program, but um, we'll shout them out and ask the question. So is the design plus designed around comp prep either sanctional or preseason. So um, I think the only competition that we're really gonna assume that everybody's doing is the open. Yeah. Outside of that, if you have a specific competition that you want prep with, I think you should email us. We can either set you up with like a short-term temporary consult that helps you use the program to prep for the event and give you a deload structure or go into a one-on-one -on -one coaching for a period of time or just use the comments to ask questions about. I know I had a couple people that competed in Australia last year that yeah. basically I just went back and forth with a couple emails that say, hey, yep. when you get the workouts that are announced, I'll explain to you how to adjust the week. And that was pretty successful. I mean, there's obviously going to be, you know, a little bit of a downside of that versus having somebody who's like one-on-one -on -one helping you with that. But I feel like that's the best way to design it. So right now, it's more of an off-season style training program yes. because we're 10 months away from the open. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's it's wise to pick that one too because right now, like if we tried to pick a competition around this time, 
which one? Yeah. There's so many so coming many. up. Yeah. So like, that's the one, the open is kind of on its own. It's after the summer, it, it leads, the, the way it's set up now is just to have a good training block through the spring and summertime to yeah. kind of lead into that. Yep, all right, next question. Oh, that question was from Reese. This one is from Sachin, I think. Uh, I would love to hear about the main focuses of the training cycle, how they fit in with the bigger picture of the training year's blocks, any advice on managing the different tr tracks, i.e. some general guidance on how to choose whether to do CrossFit or strength or engine paths would be awesome. So I think we covered the main yeah. focuses of the yeah. training. Yep. I think if you wanted to use them, we kind of explained that as well. I think CrossFit yep. and engine work really well together. Strength and engine work really well together. You need to be a little bit careful and you need to be super resilient with good movement patterns if you intend on being able to handle strength and CrossFit together. Yeah. But also, if you want to be a super high-level athlete in the sport, you have to be at that level of volume tolerance. Yep. So as a starting guidepost for that, I would say if you want to do both, do the strength path at a reduced volume. So if it says four sets, drop it to two. Yep. If it says three, drop it to one. And slowly build your capacity to tolerate that amount of just structural work. Yeah, I mean, that's necessary. That, there's so much truth in that because people don't think about developing volume tolerance with strength because no one does sets of two of anything. Yeah. But if you want to get to that level of handing that kind of volume, you have to start adding that in. Yeah. Like instead of it being, you know, five by five, it just needs to be work to five reps of a back squat just to get a quick touch on it yeah. and you kind of develop volume as you go. Yeah, and you could just build, you know, structural integrity and strength to handle that. Yeah. And if you want guidance on that again, reach out to us and we can kind of help you with which ones to pick. Cool. Eduardo. I would like to know about the main goals of the next cycle, especially in which progressions we'll focus on. Uh, so as, could we expect some progressions on short distance rows on the 500 meter paces or percentages based on tough singles or some gymnastics work based on the number achieved in ring muscle ups? The Sum it up! <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I, I think we covered yeah. most yeah. of that. There's a language barrier here, I'm yeah. sure. But I think yeah. we covered that. And I think that the... I think what he's asking is for like, you know, if you if you sign up for a 5K row program, you type in your 5K row and then it gives you paces. Yeah. If you sign up for a, a weightlifting program, like a hatch squat cycle, mm -hmm. you put in your back squat and it gives you a basic, yeah. and that is really nice, it's really structured, it's really easy to follow, but it's really good at just getting you good at one thing. Yep. It's very yep. difficult if you're handling all of this training volume to build progressive models based on that because you're changing day to day to day based on what you did the day before and based on like what your overall level of soreness and fatigue is like. So we do have some progressions like that. Yeah, and the engine path, you will have some of those. There'll be percentage efforts, so that's more just like your perceived effort, but then yeah. also you'll be testing some, like a 2K We'll be doing some run testing, and then you'll have like, hey, hey here's your percentage for the day. Yeah, so the yep. same thing with the weightlifting, but I think as you get closer to CrossFit, that kind of deteriorates away, and we don't do that much of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be more like AMRAP minus two yep. or something like yeah, that, it's where it's basically moderated by what you're capable of as opposed yes. to what, you're, what you've did in previous weeks. Yep. All right, Alexander, will the split change or vary? My, for example, Monday back squat, Wednesday hump day, et cetera. Wednesday's always hump day. You should never <laughs> Come on <ask> now. That. <laughs> and then different focus this time of the year. So we kind of explained the splits already yep. and we are in the off season. All right, so that's the current members. Instagram, traps and tattoos. Will you add my gymnastics work, muscle up specific for this cycle? I didn't understand if that meant like for, I'll, like, I'll write your yeah, muscle yeah, up yeah, specifically, yeah. but we do have the muscle up skill program in Just there. Just say yeah, it, yeah. It is. So yours. yes, it's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it is, yours. sign up. <laughs> All right, Robert J. Period D. Are there gonna be more CrossFit style Metcon since we're approaching qualifiers for sanctionals? Yes and no. Yeah, I mean, I think there's yeah. gonna be some CrossFit component every day. But not because of Sanctionals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I think, honestly, in open prep, there's more Metcon style stuff than right now. Yeah, it seems definitely. like there's a little, I mean, we're still doing intervals, but yep. the rest times between those intervals yep. are so short that I was basically yeah. like doing a Metcon. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that answers that. Coach David Lacey, will you ever have a strength and conditioning program again, or that's not solely comp prep? 
So I'm thinking this question came from an open prep. We went to one training path and we just did the open yeah. and we realized that that wasn't optimal yeah. and we wanted to go back to it. And now indefinitely we're thinking, keep the CrossFit path, keep the strength path, yeah. keep the engine path. So there is the strength and conditioning program right now. Yeah. And I think it really covers that for people that, you know, I don't, there's no kipping muscle ups. There's no double unders in the strength path and the engine path. So yeah. I think, you know, it already exists in our program. Yeah. Next, Jay Badiabel. Will there be regular overhead squat snatch balance? Uh, yes, but the primary focus, snatch and clean and jerk, since those are the two commonly tested movements in yep. the sport. So there'll be more regularly accessory work in the program. Yeah, and I'd there say to over, make the snatch better. Yeah, and I'd say overhead squat more in the CrossFit yep. stuff than yep. um, as like heavy RMs in the strength yeah, program. Yeah, you'll have some form of it almost weekly. So whether it's in the form of a snatch from the ground or you know lightweight cycling high reps or single arm dumbbell overhead squat. So yeah. it would be some form of it. Something. All right, Rogue Radish. How long will the three paths continue for indefinitely for now? Forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nick Laurie, loving the program. Trips, I think that means tips. Tips for new CrossFitters trying to keep up with adding volume. So I think develop the skills so the skill progressions can help with that, make you a little bit more resilient to the volume. Yeah. Lower the volume of the strength program like we already talked about. Take care of your nutrition. And then I think one of the things that we always encourage with one-on-one -on -one athletes, which might not be as clear in a group program, is do some low-intensity stuff yeah. work, or like working in meditation. Yeah. Yeah. This week we put some of it into the training program, like a laying meditation, do some breath work, focus on your sleep quality. Just do all the things yeah. that you know you need to do to take care of your body so that you could push it hard in the gym. Yeah, you can't spend all your time in the red. You have to have an equal amount to counter that if you're pushing that hard that often. Yeah. All right, Alex Kittle, can we stop doing L-sits? No, I'm going to send you a training program that's just L-sits every day. I, I kind of agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you're fired. <laughs> uh, Michelli, Chris, will it be strength focus? If not, recommendation for overall strength addition? Yeah, so I think if you're not strong enough, the strength program plus the fundamental skill programs. Because yep. the skill programs in and of themselves, I think, develop positional specific strength. Like yep. if you don't have muscle ups, there's isometric position holds, there's kip swings, yeah. there's stuff that's gonna develop all of that specific strength in there. So I think that would be the best way to handle it. Yeah, I mean, I think it'll be a change for a lot of people that have never followed like a strength only path before, right? They're so focused on losing their Metcon. And I'm telling you that it's okay. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's okay to step away from the Metcon a bit. Yeah. Now is the time to do it. The start of a new year, you're really far away from doing the Open. You'll have plenty of time to recondition. Jump in the throwdown to keep touches on that once a week. But if you need to get stronger, like you have to put some dedicated time into it. And for those that already have all the skills, they should still practice the skill progressions that we're giving them yeah. because it's just worthwhile continuing to get become more efficient yeah. at all those movements, especially the ones that we're putting out there. Yeah. All right, that's all the questions. That's cool. all we got to talk about. Design, new program, or new cycle starts on January 6th. We hope to see you in there. Thank you, Brandon. Thank I'm you, doing Mike. It. Max doing it. I'm doing it. Brandon's, Brandon's gonna it. I'm cherry gonna scale pick. everything. <laughs> <laughs> and he's gonna beat us all in the open. Everybody sign up so you can beat Max and everything. <laughs> you won't. <laughs>